Amen, amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, it is my pleasure to welcome each and every one of us to today's message, today's fellowship in the hearts of Jesus and many ministries. And today we are going to be taking our reading from Matthew chapter 17. Verse 22 to 27. I repeat, Matthew chapter number 17, verse 22 to 27. And we shall be reading from the New Revised, the Standard Version, Catholic Edition. As there were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. And they will kill him. And on the third day he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. When they reached Capernaum, the collectors of the tax, temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, yes, he does. And when he came, to, came home, Jesus spoke of it first, asking, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll? Or tribute from their children or from others Peter said and when Peter said from others Jesus said to him then the, the children are free however so that we do not give offense to them go to the sea and cast the hook Take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that and give it to them. For you and for me. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. Holy Father, we have heard your word again. Your word gives life. Your word restores. It rejuvenates. And we ask that as we have heard your word, let your word carry out its mission in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, it is my pleasure this night to share with us a message titled Light at the End of the Tunnel. Light at the End of the Tunnel. You see, when we say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It simply means a long awaited indication that a period of hardship or adversity is nearing an end. The, the adversity, the troubles, the storm, the darkness had prevailed for a long time. But there is a glimmer of light. A glimmer of hope. At the end of the tunnel. Even from the theme of this message, 
It, it is quite obvious that God is speaking to us concerning the storm, this hardship, the adversity that we are going through, the struggles that we are going through. As Christians, we are not exempted from struggles. Look at today's reading. Pay attention to the first two verses. Matthew 17, verse 22 to 23. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, now listen carefully, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. And they will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised. Now, after Jesus finished saying this, the Bible now tells us that the disciples were distressed. In fact, they were greatly distressed. Very troubled. Why we are they troubled? Because Jesus told them that he was going to be betrayed. And not only that, that he was going to be killed. They were not expecting this to happen. But they have heard that he was going to be betrayed and that he was going to be killed. And they believed Jesus. That was why they were greatly distressed. But I have a case to make this night. That even though the disciples of Jesus hear from Jesus what was considered to be bad news, to be distressing news. Yet, Jesus had actually, from the same leaves, at the same time, at the same place, in the same sentence, told them that I am going to be raised up in the third day. That promise of Jesus, that even though storm will come, even though betrayer will come, even though that I'm going to die, did not end. There is no full stop at the end of that sentence. In fact, the sentence was still going. And so, there is a comma. Check your Bible. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the human hand. And, now verse 23, they will kill him, comma. In other words, Jesus was still speaking. And uh, he now continued after the comma saying, and uh, on the third day, he will be raised. That one is good news. That one is a cause for joy. That one is the, is the light at the end of the tunnel. Yet, what would have brought joy to them? They failed to embrace it. And their attention happened to be on the news that we are distressing. Jesus gave them a news of his death, of his betrayal, but also gave them hope, light, Saying that I will be raised on the third day. If we were watching a movie, or if one is watching a movie, you see, it is how the movie ends that actually determines the state of the mind of the one watching. So let's say somebody is watching a movie of, you know, uh, someone betrayed, uh, someone, you know, killed. Uh, in, in other part of the movie, you know, the, the person may be overtaken with emotions and all that. But if you now see that this person has risen, 
you are going to leave that movie theater with joy. Because at last, there was victory. Amen? But the disciples failed to see the victory part of this, this story. They failed to see that good news, that light at the end of the tunnel. They rather fixed their eyes, their minds on the troubles. And this is a reflection of our story. Amen? It is the reflection of our story. How many times have we heard certain promises of God for us? But because of the troubles we are going through, we forget about those promises. We skip <laughs> the resurrection. We, we skip the hope, the light and the tunnel. We skip it. And we go all the way to the storm. And we bury our minds in the storm. Is that your story? <laughs> you see, when Jesus first predicted his passion, that is his death, Peter skipped right over the, 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 the resurrection and focus only on the disturbing news that Jesus had to die first. This we find in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 23. Peter told Jesus, no, 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 this will not happen to you. We learned that he called Jesus by the side and said, what is, what is this kind of thing you are talking about? No, it is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> God did Matthew 16, verse uh, 21 to 23. You see that after Jesus predicted his death, how he would go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the, end, at the hand of the elders and chief priests and the teachers of the law, and how they are going to kill him, he also told them that on the third day he was going to rise. Peter said, Jesus, come. Matthew 16, verse 22 tells us that Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Jesus. Never, Lord. This shall never happen. It shall not and shall never happen to you. That was the scene where Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get behind me. You see, the ways of God is different from the ways of man. Jesus himself, although God had to ascend to glory through suffering. When we are in our suffering moment or season, let us understand that there is light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know the way you are going through now, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. That is hope. That darkness will not prevail forever is a statement of hope. Is it it? That what they are going through will not prevail forever. It's a statement of assurance. 
that God has a plan. That God, that salvation, that the help is coming. Is that not enough to strengthen us? Is that not enough to encourage us? And even to keep us moving, to keep us praying. Let me also draw your attention to Matthew 20, verse 17 to 20. There we find out that the Bible says, And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the, the twelve disciples and uh, said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed, and he shall be condemned to death. I shall be delivered unto the hands of the Gentiles to mock and to be scourged, and to be crucified. And on the third day, he shall rise again. After all this, they were troubled. They were troubled. <laughs> you see, in these three references from the scripture, we see that Jesus predicted his death three times in three different scenes. And also predicted that he would also be raised on the third day. Three different scenes. And yet, they failed to understand. This was even when he's, he said it direct. It's not that he said it as a proverb. This was a a straight, a, a literal statement. But in the many other occasions, Jesus also spoke to them about his resurrection. With the parables, for example, remember the case where you say that the seed will be sown in the earth, and until the star seed is sown on the earth, it will not be a new life. That so shall a sort of man be sown in the earth, and will be raised. Jesus was using parables to even talk to them. And now he begins to be more explicit. Yet, they don't get it. Their minds were troubled. And because their mind was troubled, for that reason, Jesus in John 14, 1, now tells them, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. And that is also a message for somebody today. And Jesus is telling you, Jesus is telling me, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Also believe in me. Let us listen to him. Do you hear that? If Jesus says, believe in me, then I will believe in him. We ought to believe in him. Today is a message of hope. For the Lord says that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, brother, it has been a long season of darkness. Okay. That is the more reason why you are nearer to the end of the tunnel where there is light. Isn't it? Isn't it? The night season had been long spent. And the morning is nearing close. If somebody knows that this exam is going to write, that he's going to pass it, and there are opportunities that await him after the exam, that is more than enough incentive, motivation for him to keep studying for that exam. So it is true for our Christian journey that the Lord tells us there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
So now that I'm still in the time of darkness, now that I'm still in the time of the storm and the troubles, now that everything appears to be collapsing upon me, I have to be strengthened, I have to be encouraged, I have to be motivated by that hope that, that is light at the end of the tunnel. It is a powerful statement. Light at the end of the tunnel. It is a statement for the despairing, for the one whose hope is tearing apart. Amen? Come on, think about it. Where there is no hope, how can we find life? How can life exist? Life exists because there's hope. Why do people give up on their lives and even commit suicide? Because they have lost hope in life. But if they have hope, they will keep hanging on. They will keep anchoring on God. They will keep praying. They will keep waiting for the, looking forward to the day that the light will emerge and break the darkness. Amen? So no matter the circumstances we find ourselves, let us not give up. Let us see hope. Let us see light at the end of the tunnel. Let us see the light, not the darkness, not the storm. That was the problem of Peter. Peter focused on the storm. And he began to sink. No one focuses on the storm or on the giant or on the bad news or on the troubles day and night and makes it to, to victory. Uh -uh. Rather, in the midst of darkness and storms and bad news and all that is going on, you focus on the light. You fix your, the, the eyes of your mind on hope, on Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the righteous. Without him, there's no hope. So we must have hope. The problem actually is not because there is darkness. Or there is difficult circumstance or circumstances. Or because there is a storm. That is not the problem. Really. You know what the problem is? The problem is that we focus our eyes on them instead of on hope. Instead of envisioning salvation coming. If in the midst of problems or troubles of life, we see change coming, we are going to succeed. But when we convince ourselves that the difficult circumstances will not change, That is where the problem lies. At that point, we give up. We give up on, on the business. We give up on the career. We give up on, on trying to uh, keep our health healthy by eating the right food, or the, avoiding things that may eat down on our health. We, we stop doing exercise because we tell ourselves all these things I've been doing, they're not bearing good food at all. And you give up. You give up on the marriage. You give up on the child that is stubborn or that is rebellious, that is like a black sheep in the family. 
I want to use the opportunity to remind us that Elijah did not give up. Even though that when he prayed once, the rain did not fall. For some years, there was no rain, not even a drop in the land of Israel. And this man of God, full of power, who knew that when he opens the mouth to pray, that things happen. Yet, when he prayed, first prayer, first, second prayer meeting, third prayer meeting, no change. The sun was hitting harder. He kept asking his servant to go out and check and see if there's any sign of God answering this prayer. He went and he kept, he kept getting bad news. Oh, master, the sun is hitting hard. There is nothing, no hope that rain will fall. What I see is the sun hitting hard. That was not a good news. But the faith of Elijah was seeing beyond the bad news, beyond the darkness. He saw light at the end of the tunnel. And that is only possible when we have faith. And because we have faith in Jesus, because we have faith that things will change, then we have hope. So let us not give up. Elijah did not give up. And so at the seventh session of his prayer, there was great downpour. The rain began to fall. The, the rain was so mighty. There was a, 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 a very mighty rain in the land. You hear that? So my dear people of God, let's not give up. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep praying. Let's keep anchoring on God. And sometimes it, it may appear as if there is no hope again. It may appear as if there is no, no, no convincing rationale to keep anchoring on. But you know what? That's how it is. Keep anchoring on Jesus. You don't know the day of your visitation. Don't forget to look at verse 8. When the Son of Man shall come, on earth, shall he find faith? Shall he find people who, who stay anchor on their faith? Shall he find people who keep knocking at the door? Amen? <laughs> people give up when there's no prospect for change. When there's no hope. But the Lord says, I that see the beginning from the end, I see light at the end of the tunnel. And so one of the most cruel and uh, painful things one could say to a child that was giving him pain is you a hopeless child? Parents should not use that kind of words for their children. No matter the, the story of that child today, I want to tell you if that child is still alive, it is because God has a plan. It is because there is an opportunity for victory. The chance of victory is high. Amen? Many troublesome children have ended up to become evangelists. Some of them have become priests, monks. Some of them are, pre are even saints today. Look at uh, St. Uh, Augustine. The mother went through so much storm, so much seasons of darkness. 
so much pain because Augustine was a big time pain in her life. But she didn't give up. The only thing that was sustaining Monica, the mother of, of Augustine, was hope or Christ. That light will come at the end of a tunnel for those who anchor on God and wait on Him. It will not, dis it will not disappoint them. My dear friends in Christ, let us not embrace hopelessness. Rather, let us see light at the end of the tunnel. When we convince ourselves there is no hope, we'll kill. We'll kill hope in our, in our hearts. we bury hope in our hearts. But when we see hope coming down with that is life, let us trust in God who is able to do all things, who is a specialist in turning hopeless situations to hope. In fact, the Bible is written of this our great God so that you and I who have believed in him would have hope. Yeah. So that we would have hope in even very difficult moments. Even in this difficult world. Was it not the other day, the other day that Jesus in John 16 verse 33 was even talking to his disciples and saying, in this world, you have many troubles. <laughs> but be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. So, you see, there is hope there. I have overcome the world. That, that changed the whole scenario. That's where the movie ended. Yet, we anchor on the witchcraft attacks, on the bad news, on the betrayals. We anchor on all this. There is hope. Do you hear that, child of God? There is hope. The other day, Job was writing in Job 14 verse 1 that man born of woman is of few days and the life full of troubles. But then, but then, Job also tells us that there is hope for a tree. <laughs> that when it is cut down, it will spring forth again. It will spring forth again. Job 14 verse 7. There is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will spring forth again. That is hope. It will blossom again. It will do what? It will blossom. It will come back to life. You cut it down. Yeah, but that's not the end of the story. It will come back to life. It will blossom. The other day, uh, Prophet Isaiah was actually talking about this kind of thing in Isaiah 11 verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod, a shoot, out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of its root. The root of Jesse. That's Jesus. Jesse was a forgotten generation. A forgotten people. A forgotten family. But even though the circumstances had cut it down like a tree, yet there was a, a, a shoot. A little life that sprouted that came forth from the stem of Jesse. And that is Jesus, the hope of the righteous. That is Jesus. <laughs> so 
So if I may ask you, what is, what is the situation you are going through? Spend time in prayer. Spend time in trusting God. One day, it shall be a story. One day, it shall be a story. There was a time the people of Israel were in Egypt. It was all darkness. It was all pain, troubles. But there was a time that the Lord delivered them. The Lord visited them. The Lord heard their cry. And came to visit them. Hell. I have heard your cry. And I have come to deliver you. That is the word of God. I have heard your cry. And I have come. I have Come to deliver you, to pity you, to show mercy to you. This was the word of God for the people of Israel. In Exodus 3 verse 7, I have indeed seen your affliction. But just immediately after saying that, the Lord now tells them in verse 8, 9, and 10, that I will come down from heaven to deliver you. God has a plan to bring the dawn of hope for his children. Let us keep persevering. Maybe you need hope desperately. Keep calling on Jesus. Or Better to say, maybe you desperately need of change. Keep hoping. Keep hoping. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We all know the story of Daniel, right? <laughs> A man who went through so many troubles. Big, long, deep, dark tunnel. Daniel went through all that. He even found himself in the lion's den. But the Lord brought him out and placed him on the mountain of glory. My dear friends, we are coming out of darkness and we are going to light. I am telling you this tunnel is longer than you think. But I am also telling you that the light is nearer than you think. Whatever is the story you are going through. No matter how long we have been in that tunnel, the Lord is making a way. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Let us comfort ourselves by this message that the Lord is coming. Let us listen to the Lord that tells us that he is coming. He does not fear. He is coming. Amen. Let us understand that the Lord has a final say over the situation we are going through. And if he will say this night to you, to me, that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that is what it is. That is what it is. So distress will not have the final say. But God will. Amen. 
God will see you through. God will see you through. The time of tribulation, the Lord will not abandon you. You see, the people of Israel had been a suffering people. Back in the days of Moses, you will see how they were slaves in Egypt. And um, we see all that they went through in, in the hands of the Babylonians, uh, in the hands of the Assyrians, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, and all that. They were trampled upon. Their possessions were even taken. Their buildings, their temples even um, broken down and they desecrated. Okay? <laughs> they are, they are uh, worship objects or instruments, things they used to worship. They were all um, broken and or stolen, taken away. They used to do wrong things. They are venerated altars. We are desecrated. They are treasured positions. We are desecrated. It was never easy for them. Watch the history of Israel. But at the end, the Lord gave them victory. The Lord gave them victory. There was light at the end of the tunnel. History reminds us of how Adolf Hitler had a very bogus plan to exterminate all the Jews, to kill all of them on earth. That was a, a program, a, an, a, a mission, a plan. And it was reported that he killed over 6 million Jews. A horrendous holocaust. Just to make sure that there was no gene of the Jewish on earth. But after all this, the Jews are still alive, existing, and have their own nation. There was a time that their nation was taken away from them, and there, and there was no Israel on the map, <laughs> which was the agenda of their enemies. But the Lord gave them hope. He said, you will return home. Amen? It may be a difficult beginning, but that doesn't matter. What is most important is how we ended. If you are running the race on the right track, keep running the race on the right track. Because it is our state at the last lap that matters. And I pray that we shall be faithful in this race. Let us be courageous. Let us understand that our God is bigger than whatever troubles that we may be going through. His hands is mighty. And he deploys his angels to protect us. The God of Jacob is with us. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 tells us of the distress of Jacob. Remember Jacob is Israel, right? In other words, the distress of Israel. The tribulation of Jacob. Yet, the Lord saw him through. And all that Jacob went through, there was victory. There was a time he was running away from his brother Esau, remember? Remember? 
There was a time he had to serve his uh, uncle, Leban. There was a time he had to deal with it, uh, being manipulated into marrying another person, somebody he doesn't love as a wife, somebody wh whom he didn't have any love for, and he was cornered into it. Went through all of such troubles. But at the end, the name Jacob was changed to Israel, and the, the great nation, not just a man, but the nation. There is light at the end of the tunnel. The light. Let us understand that God is at work, that God is not running away from us. In the time of trouble. Rather, he comes to embrace us, to sustain us, to encourage us. <laughs> Difficult time will surely come. But let us not lose courage. Let us not lose courage. Pray today that the grace of God will sustain everyone. Whatever is the spiritual battle you are going through. The other day, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, there was a great battle. And Jemichael was having a serious battle against the red dragon. And it was a fierce fight. But the Bible says that they prevailed. They prevailed. They knew that victory was coming. Because they were fighting with the power of God. And at the end, that victory came. And then because of that, there was no longer any place for the devil in heaven. You want to drive the devil out of your family? You must be a warrior. You must be a fighter. Amen? <laughs> Jesus. So let us anchor the Lord. For salvation is near. For the one who lifts us up is near. For the one who brings good news is near. His name is Jesus. Is there hope? Oh yeah, there is hope. Sure. So let us not be taken aback by context, by shame, by distress. No, let us be motivated. Let us encourage ourselves that this storm will not carry us away. That we shall not get lost in the darkness. You know that how dark it will be. You can't even see yourself. That was the kind of darkness in Egypt for three days and nobody could even see. We weren't even talking of seeing light because there was no light. We weren't even talking of, you can't even see the, the, yourself. You can't even see the power of your hand because the darkness was very thick. But while this was happening, God provided light for his people in Goshen. There is a Goshen. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I've told you. That's victory. <laughs> Jesus. You may be in that land, that dry land, where there is no water, no stream, no life. But you see, that coconut grows in that land and carries water up into the air. Where did they get the water from? Even in the dry land. God has given it. Maybe you are in that terrible circumstance. You are in that dry land even right now. But even in that situation, the Lord is bringing His miracle for you. 
And where there is no water, you fetch water. The water, the water of salvation. The rays of hope is coming from to break the veil, the walls of darkness. Why? Because there's a group. That ray of light. Those rays of light are the rays of hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So let us rejoice. And let not our let not our hope disappear. Let not allow the enemy to bury our hope. Because when we lose it, we lose life. We lose we lose the drive to keep pushing, to keep praying, to keep going to mass, to go to church. Let us trust in the Lord. Help Jesus. Talk to him now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the bad news that is in the air. But let's keep praying. Let, let's keep anticipating that little light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe all you see right now is darkness looming on the horizon. Where well, that is what it seems to be. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is light that will that will emerge from the horizon. That is the that is the light of the rising sun. When when it was night, darkness prevails, darkness governs. Governing, even darkness threatens. Darkness appears to be on the throne. But let me tell you, just in the morning, just in the morning, the sun breaks the darkness and is enthroned. Beyond that horizon, there's a rising sun. The sun of hope. Rays of hope is coming to your life right now. Jesus is that light and is coming to your life right now. It's coming to your family right now. It's coming to your business right now. Let that right light, let that light shine onto your life at this point in time. Talk to Jesus. Let his presence drive away that fear. De 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 take away that disappointment. Let his presence change the way you think. Change the way we think. Let his presence give us hope in the situation we are going through. Talk to him now. Lord, touch your children at this hour. We trust in you. Every day we come to this prayer meeting and we come to talk to you. We, we, we have heard your message tonight that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And this was you that gave this theme. And so, Father, Father, we believe your word what we know you do not say. And so, Lord, with our mouth we're saying we shall see light at the end of the tunnel. You said it, and we are echoing it. We are saying it with you. We are tapping into it, and let it come to life in us. For I taught your children. They are presenting their petitions now. Every part of our being, of our life, of family, of our life or business that have been covered with blanket of darkness, Father, remove that towel of darkness. Father, remove in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Take, take, take that shame away, Lord. That even when you were buried in the earth, that was not the end of the story. There was light in the tunnel. When on that very Sunday morning, that resurrection morning, the angel of light came to the tomb and rolled back the stone. And there was light in the, in the tomb. That tomb of darkness, that cold, frigid place, that, 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 that imprisonment place, that cold place, 
life came in. And there was resurrection. Father, let that life come into families that are in, encased in spiritual prison. Let your light break that chain. Let your light roll back the stone. Father, take over tonight. Help Jesus. Let your light bring the seed of hope tonight, your people, who are having so many questions concerning what they are going through, wondering if you are there, wondering if you care for them. Father, let this message bring the seed of hope again. Let that, let that hope be enrooted in the hearts of your children. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us to focus on your promises and not on the threats of the enemy. Father, you are amazing God. We we'll give to you that situation your children are going through. Child of God, whatever I tell you, you know you are going through, whatever is your concern, give them to Jesus at this hour. There's an exchange. You give it to Jesus, and Jesus gives you victory. Let us give it to him now. Talk to him now. That headache, that little headache, that pain in the flesh, talk to Jesus. Give it to him. He knows what to do. He knows how to handle it. Just give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Victory is coming. Give it, give it to him. Give it to him. Jesus. Jesus. That child of God that is believing God for job. You have put so many applications, so many rejections. Now, hear it, I hear it very well now. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. That child of God going through immigration problems, rejoice, for there is light at the end of the tunnel. And that light is soon breaking forth. Your eyes shall see it, and our ears shall hear your testimony. Talk to Jesus. He has come. He's here. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Maybe you are, your eyes have been fixed on the darkness, but see, that was how the disciples of Jesus fixed their eyes on darkness when Jesus was buried. But on that Easter Sunday, the Spirit of the Lord turned their eyes from grief to joy. I pray that this shall be your testimony tonight in the name of Jesus. Your grief shall turn into joy. Your good Friday shall turn into Easter Sunday in the name of Jesus. It is the power of God in the name of Jesus. Let him take over tonight. Let him fill you tonight. Jesus, talk to him, talk to him. He will give us the grace to endure the trials. He will also give us the grace to believe that He is coming. He has also given us the grace to believe that no matter what we are facing, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Jesus. Our story changer is Jesus. He is the one who is faithful and true. And He will not. He will not fail us. He will always give us new opportunities. Even opportunities to start again. Talk to him. Talk to him. Lord Jesus, even as your children are talking to you at this hour, may your spirit move. May your spirit, that spirit of revelation, reveal to us your power of resurrection. Your power that brings dead situations into a place of life. To turn around ugly situations, Lord. Father, visit your children and grant this victory. Touch your people at this hour. Every dominion of darkness, dominion of evil, that have robbed your children of their glory, that have murdered destiny. Today, by the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who command such evil powers, to catch fire in the name of Jesus. Commanded to be arrested now. 
every spirit that has taken away somebody's honor. I pray tonight, let that spirit be destroyed and let that honor taken away from the child of God be restored now in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. That funeral, that death that has been projected to that the family will not stand. We can't feel it in the name of Jesus. That instead of funeral procession in that family, there shall be procession of victory. There shall be procession of life in that marriage, in that business, in that destiny, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Jesus. Jesus. Let that victory come. Let there be laughter again. Let there be joy again. Let there be healing again. Let there be mercy again. Let there be increase again. In the name of Jesus. Let there be dance again. In the name of Jesus. Let there be celebration again. In the name of Jesus. Let there be recovery again. In the name of Jesus. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Jesus, Jesus, the power of God is moving now. A time for the Lord to touch his people has come. A time to bring the garment of hope upon somebody has come. Receive that garment of hope now. For the Lord is here to touch you, to decorate you. In the name of Jesus. Don't forget Job 14 verse 7. For even the, for a tree that is cut down, that is hope. Because life will come forth again. Maybe you are cut down. But there is hope. There is life coming again. The Lord is able to do it to his glory of his name. In the name of Jesus. Father, take over. Sanctify your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. That today, Israel is coming back again. In the name of Jesus. That today, victory is coming to me again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Even in the darkest of hours, in the most painful of times, the Lord pours out His Spirit upon His people. And now He's pouring that Spirit upon His people, upon you now, for a divine turnaround. In the name of Jesus. There is a bright light of hope. In the name of Jesus, Father, have your way. Thank you for bringing salvation. Thank you for the great harvest. Father, you are a wonderful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the stars that are shining now. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the God of everlasting glory. And now your glory is shining forth. Father, we appreciate you. Blessed be your most holy name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you, Jesus. You have done it again. You have done it again. And because you are with your children, because you are with me, because you are with us, we shall face tomorrow. Oh, yes. Because he lives. Because Jesus lives. Because he is with us. Even in this time of trouble, we shall face the trouble. We shall face the storm. We shall face tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Because there is hope. Because there is light at the end of the tunnel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the grace to endure. Thank you for the grace of encouragement. For you have encouraged us with your scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yad, that you have used the preaching of this light to strengthen your children who have been incapacitated already. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, El Shaddai. In the name of Jesus. You are the God of hope. Thank you for telling us, I am giving to you hope because I am God of hope. Thank you for defining yourself, introducing yourself to us tonight as the God of hope. May your hope fill us with joy and peace. According to Romans 15, verse 13. In the name of Jesus. May those who have been starved of peace, starved of joy, May they receive joy again. In the name of Jesus. May they receive joy again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Blessed be your name. Let there be overflow of hope. Let there be overflow of joy. Let there be an overflow of life in your family. I prophesy that into your life. Rejoice in hope, the Bible says in Romans 12, 12. And be patient in tribulations. Father, we thank you for this is your message for us. And we have embraced your message. And we know that we cannot be crushed. We refuse to be subdued under pressure. We refuse to be exterminated. For your hand is upon us. And we give you all worship and adoration. Thank you for comforting us. Thank you for making your hope. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, El Shaddai. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And amen.